Hi, this is the Tropical Tip for Friday evening, November 13th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Still watching new storms here in mid-November, we've got a new one that has developed in the Central Caribbean that we've mentioned a couple times over the last few days. This is now Tropical Storm Iota. Uh, Tropical Depression 31, originally earlier today, has now strengthened with winds of about 40 miles per hour and has become Tropical Storm Iota. This is still kind of a broad, loose system that is not very vertically stacked, uh, but it is going to be strengthening as it comes westward here, and unfortunately, another major impact to Nicaragua and Honduras seems likely uh, within a few days as we get past the weekend, and only a couple weeks after being hit by Hurricane Ada with disastrous flooding, the region may experience yet another hurricane. If we look close in here at the structure of this system, it's still in the organization phase, and you'll see right away semblance of rotation right in here. This is not the surface center, though. This is the mid-level center, and uh, this is mid-level cloud that you're seeing rotate here. If you actually go out to the west of the convective field and look at the surface wind, you'll see it curling around like this, and you'll see that eventually we start getting our westerly winds in here. And the actual surface low is probably somewhere in here offset to the west, of where the mid-level center currently is off on the eastern side. So this is not a vertically coherent cyclone yet, uh, but all signs point to it eventually becoming a stacked and thus more organized cyclone by tomorrow or somewhere around there. And one of the reasons this seems pretty likely is A, there's not a lot of wind shear, which I'll show you in a second, uh, but also just the structure of the flow of the disturbance here. If you, again, take stock of where the broad uh, envelope of rotation is in the lower levels, the strongest westerly wind band is coming in here, and uh, the mid-level low is in here. And you can see that because westerly wind is flowing in from the southern side of that, there's a lot of low-level vorticity sitting here on the northern side of that westerly wind band and that low level vorticity will continually get entrained underneath of this mid-level low eventually forcing the development of an aligned vortex because this vorticity will induce a lot of low level spin that progressively tries to fight itself farther east underneath of the area of thunderstorms in this mid-level center so this is a pretty favorable setup for getting the vortex aligned as long as the shear stays low. And it is expected to be fairly low here. If we look at the water vapor large scale picture, uh, we'll see the storm here. There's Iota. And there is currently a little bit of an upper level trough nestled right in there. So there's a little bit of resistance to outflow on the western side, maybe just a little bit of westerly shear. That might be one of the reasons why the vortex is not stacked right now. Uh, but this little trough is quite weak and all of this convective heating, all these thunderstorms going off in the Caribbean, is likely to erode a trough of uh, this weak intensity fairly quickly. And so within a day or two, this trough will likely be gone and it will be replaced by a pretty broad upper level ridge in general over Iota. And this is likely to favor a lot of strengthening considering that there's not a whole lot of dry air around. You can see the boundary between moist and dry up here, uh, but this is pretty far away. So this is not really getting into Iota circulation at all at the moment. So this is expected to be a pretty favorable environment. And if we look at how this evolves on the GFS, you'll see on the mid-level moisture plot here, most of the green is offset on the eastern side of this black contour outlining the low-level center. So that the surface center is in there somewhere, and you can see the, the incoherent uh, vertically misaligned vortex there. Uh, but if you go forward in time, pretty quickly you'll find uh, that this stacks by, say, late Saturday on this particular model run, and we have a more coherent cyclone in the vertical direction. And once that happens, intensification is likely to proceed apace as conditions are quite favorable here as it moves on its way toward the west. And we'll see that on the model. Quick strengthening into a hurricane and perhaps a strong one as it approaches Central America. And you can see that uh, on the upper level uh, flow plot here at 200 millibars, you'll see that little trough here producing a little bit of shear at the moment to the west of Iota. But if we go forward, uh, you'll see that this erodes pretty quickly, like I mentioned, and what we get instead is very nice outflow, healthy outflow toward the polar direction and also the equatorward direction, broad mid-level, uh, broad upper-level ridge here in general. Favorable environment uh, for a developing hurricane, and all models are universally calling for this to strengthen a lot in the time that it has left. Approaching Central America, perhaps as early as Monday morning, uh, we'll see about the timing on the landfall there. 
Uh, but the landfall point itself is a topic of question. Uh, one of the reasons this is likely to go into Central America, if I just go back here and look at the 850 millibar wind plot, you'll see the cyclone come west here. And it is moving westward throughout this time, but very similar to when Hurricane Ada was in a similar location just a couple weeks ago. You're going to see this ridge in the low levels develop over the south central United States. This is a big high, a big cold high due to a dome of cold air over the southern U.S. This is generating a lot of northeasterly flow down into the northwest Caribbean. So again, that's a wall of steering flow in the lower levels that is going to try to force the hurricane to turn toward the left there and dive into Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua. Again, very similar to Hurricane Ada. A caveat in this situation, though, in comparison to Ada, is that it's possible that in this case, that steering is not as strong toward the south. Remember, Ada was uh, forced south so much that it did a dip like this for a whole day before going inland. We're not likely to see something quite that stark here. The steering toward the south is not quite as pronounced. And if the hurricane gets strong quickly, say south of Jamaica, and it's already getting really strong, it's going to tend to stay toward the north a little bit longer. And it's possible that this slips just north of Honduras before turning southward or perhaps making it all the way to the eastern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula before turning south, uh, therefore hitting Belize or Mexico instead of making landfall here first. And that's going to be the big question mark on the track going forward. And we can see that on some models that get this really strong, like the H wharf. You can see that by 12Z Sunday, this would be Sunday morning, there's Jamaica up here, and here's Iota, already a developing hurricane and a healthy one at this time on the model. And if this kind of forecast proves to be more realistic, uh, then the, the, the storm may get strong enough that it's able to stay just to the north of the Honduran coastline, which you can see down here. And so the storm just kind of scoots off to the north of the country and ends up in this case on this model run approaching the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico instead, or Belize. And of course, it would likely be a strong storm at this point. But that's the big question, is whether or not it makes landfall in Central America first. And if we look at the GFS ensemble, you can see how this kind of plays out in terms of the uncertainty. We have some members, the bulk of them, perhaps just a little more than half, getting into Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, by turning slightly toward the west-southwest, or just moving due west and hitting the continent. But you see that some of these members that get stronger earlier, and the ones that are, are red and orange here, end up slipping a little bit farther to the north, and before turning south, they have slipped north of Honduras, so they end up hitting Belize or Mexico instead. And so we do need to watch for this. It's possible uh, that this becomes a more direct threat farther west than the Honduran coastline, uh, but that's going to depend very much on how quickly it organizes over the next 24 to 48 hours. And, you know, at this point, south of Jamaica, what does it look like? Is it already getting strong or not? Uh, will matter a lot. For now, the NHC is going with the model consensus, which does have a landfall in Central America. And so you can see it uh, moving west here and then taking a slight bend toward the left, hitting near the Nicaragua-Honduras border sometime on Monday afternoon on this particular forecast. Though, of course, the timing on that landfall could be plus or minus half a day or so. And uh, again, we'll see that cone of uncertainty extends far enough north that it may be something we have to watch in Belize or Mexico and Guatemala as well. And we're likely to get rain in this whole area regardless of exactly where that landfall is. But in terms of storm surge and wind impacts specifically, we are going to be watching very carefully for where that landfall actually occurs. Uh, flooding, a huge concern again, unfortunately, with any storm hitting Central America or this region. There's a lot of mountains in here and a lot of water is likely to fall out of the sky, similar, with, similar to when Hurricane Ada came through. Hopefully not quite as bad because Ada slowed down. This one is not expected to slow down as much but still uh, really unfortunate uh, for this region of the world. So please be prepared and stay safe. Our thoughts are with everyone in these countries. We'll keep an eye on this. Likely to be strong. You can see NHC makes this a major hurricane. Winds of 120 by the time of landfall. All signs point to this uh, being pretty strong when it gets there. So stay safe, everyone. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.